In this video, we'll be talking about chromatin immunoprecipitation and sequencing. It's also known as CHIP-seq. So CHIP-seq is a method to study DNA protein interaction in a genome wide scale. This is a technique that can help us to understand where does a transcription factor binds in a, in a genomic location. It's a powerful tool to identify genome-wide association of several DNA binding protein or transcription factor or any other histones, let's say. So here is a situation one and two. In situation one, a transcription factor marked here in red binds to a specific genomic location. So it has a very specific binding site in the genome. It doesn't bind to every site or many sites in the genome. It is also possible that there is another transcription factor that binds into many genomic locations. Whatever be the scenario, these kind of questions can be answered by ChIP-seq. So let's see how this process work. First of all, antibody is incubated against the transcription factor X. So we need an antibody against the transcription factor whose binding we are trying to investigate. So in this case, this antibody detects the red transcription factor. After that, there are too much chromatin associated with these transcription factors. So we need to sever the, the chromatin by sonication. So there are small fragments of the chromatin which are generated after sonication that you can see in step number two. In step number three, a pull down experiment is performed where on a magnetic bead, these antibodies are coated and the portion of the chromatin which is bound by this transcription factor will be pulled down because there is an interaction between the antigen and the antibody and it would be you and the magnetic pull would be used to pull down these fraction from the pull down fraction the dna fragments would be recovered so these dna fragments are bound by transcription factor x next question is where does these DNA fragment belong into the genome? So these fragments would be sequenced and this is known as reads. After these reads are generated, they would be aligned against the existing genome. And then a peak calling would be performed. Peak calling simply means how many peak for a genomic location one can find. So basically if there are let's say 10 fragments in a particular mapping to a particular genomic location that means the transcription factor highly binds to that particular region so in this case if we see here these reads or the fragments all correspond to this particular genomic location and these genomic location can be obtained from genome assemblies in the uh, databases so this peak height means how strong would be the binding so here you can see there is a strong binding, here is a strong binding, but there is no apparent binding in this particular region. So how does the data look like? Data would somehow look like this. So the, you can see the transcription factor X chip, uh, chip peak. In this case, we can see the peak is co-localizing with a gene uh, and the promoter of the gene mostly. So we can conclude from this data that the particular transcription factor binds to the promoter region of this gene do look at the chip, uh, chip peaks in other lo genomic locations and you won't see much of that in the other places. Okay, there are many other applications, for example, mapping the transcription factor binding, epigenetic modification studies, histone modification profiling, identification of enhancer promoters, etc. So, be, I mean, Forget, forget about all these applications. Now let's try to understand it in a bit more details with some examples. In this case, the specific histones are used for the chip seq experiment. So an uh, antibody was used against the H2AZ variant of the histone and it was note that where does these histone variant is mapping to. It maps to the promoter of this particular gene. Also, H3.3, which is enriched in uh, promoters and gene bodies of actively transcribing gene, can show us this particular gene marked here is active. Another chip seq experiment here is serine 5 phosphate of RNA polymerase 2. So, serine 5 phosphate uh, phosphorylated RNA polymerase 2 is an active RNA polymerase. So in this case, if you get a lot of chip peak all along the body, that means this gene is actively transcribed. So now we are looking at different, different 
chip signatures and by combining all these signatures we get a detailed outlook into the transcription process so that is the power of chipseq a it can give you an overall idea and deeper insight about transcription also it can give you a genome wide understanding about a transcription factor or a dna binding protein binding now often chip seeks are combined with many other techniques such as atac sequencing on which i have made a detailed video so click on the i button to get that video so often chip seek rna seek and atac seek should be combined together to understand the transcription factor binding the chromatin accessibility and the gene expression so in this case let me walk you through this data neuron and fibroblast are uh, kind of compared for this gene a transcription profile so in this case the rna seq data tells us the expression of gene a is less in fibroblast more in neurons and if we look at the chip peaks you can see the transcription factor one particular transcription factor is binding more in the promoter present in the neuron and it's not present that much in the fibroblast so it's basically a cell type specific transcription factor also it can be seen that the promoter region was much more accessible in this case so ataxic give us an understanding about accessibility of the region so the promoter was accessible now the, the promoter is bound to that transcription factor as a result there is a gene expression for gene a and in the fibroblast the promoter was not that accessible transcription factor also doesn't bind and in this case you see a very less expression so more and more layer of information about transcription is uncovered when chipseq is combined with other techniques so i hope this video was useful and we can talk more about these techniques in detailed videos stay tuned for more get more notes and flashcards in our facebook page or instagram page links are provided in the description you can support our channel using paytm paypal or upi see you in next video